Many say that the best Pokemon trainer from a certain region is their local champion. But is that true? Are Lance's three Dragon Knights really that much of a problem? Is Wallace's water type team really that hard to figure out how to beat? And then there's Cynthia, the woman who made 10 year olds rage quit. <laughs> then they just made her even more difficult in this game by giving her Pokemon held items and Eevees. So I want to play through this game as Cynthia using her same movesets, but I'm going to play on set mode and not allow items, including the held ones, because I want to give my opponents a fighting chance. Before Cynthia was champion, she was a thief, growing up alongside her friend Barry. At 10 years old, she stole a Piplup, and Barry took the Turtwig, knowing he'd have the advantage over two of my future Mons. A couple days later, Cynthia was caught red-handed by Professor Rowan. Will you give back the Piplup? So Cynthia had to go find her real first starter on Route 204, that being Badoo. But that little plant wasn't enough to make her happy. No, she wanted to start a group that gave nightmares to kids who played Gen 4 for the first time. She also ran laps in Jubilife City to stay in top shape and increase her friendship with Badoo. She's a runner, she's a track star. After much sweat and tears from constant sprinting, Cynthia now has a real damage dealer on her hands, Roselia. For reference, I have been playing for over two hours and we still haven't fought her first rival fight yet. Speak of the devil, here he is now. Luckily, his Starly does not know any flying type moves yet, so this is doable. I do miss my first stun spore while they tackle, then they quick attack, making contact, which activates my poison touch ability, poisoning Barry's bird. I now take this time to use growth twice, increasing my attack and special attack by two stages. Sometimes Starly growls, but a couple absorbs later, suck the life out of that bird. And this Turtwig sequence goes on forever. Absorb is ineffective, Poison Sting does nothing because he keeps withdrawing, but thankfully Turtwig tackled and got poisoned in the process for laying his paws on Roselia. And that's the reason we win. All right, Rourke, smash or pass. Uh, how about a gym battle instead? Geodude is rock and ground, so is Onyx, and Kranidos doesn't take the absorbs too well either, so I guess I win. Oh, Cynthia, you've come at the perfect time. Smash or pass. How about new? At Valley Windworks, I find Cynthia's second team member, Shellos, and it's pink too, just like hers. And credit where credit is due, this grunt has to be the smartest of all grunts in Pokemon history. They don't just give up their key because they lost to a 10 year old, they ignore the kid. If only I had some decent Pokemon. Now here's my jam. Let's move on. So Commander Mars wants to battle. Well, her Zubat doesn't seem to be feeling it, missing a supersonic, then deciding to take the bench by U-turning. I switch out Shellos for Roselia to be smacked by a fake out. Her ugly should be a challenge for my Roselia, but Mars has it doing this. Well, we take those, and we get to see Papa reunite with his daughter. I lead Cheryl through Eterna Forest safely. Then I find my future self in Eterna City, who actually cuts me three times. Ouch! Hello, Cynthia. I've got someone I'd like you to meet. Rourke? No, get me out of here. Let's just face the second gym leader and get out of this town. Gardenia's Cherubi has only not very effective moves against my Roselia, so I take this chance to use growth five times, but stop once Cherubi starts copying me. This results in a one-hit KO with cut, it takes two cuts to kill the Turtwig, and four cuts to knock out Roserade because of a super potion, winning us the forest gym badge. Afterwards, I get a call that someone is keeping a Clefairy hostage. What kind of person would do such a thing? Oh. Oh, that kind of person. Go back to your apartment and fix it. Fix what? Your pants! <laughs> Who's this? That one pant leg on for. All right, guess I gotta knock some sense into her. While Zubat is wasting time giving me a mean look, Shellos crushes them with two ancient powers. Skun Tank comes in, emphasis on the tank, because once they poison gas, Shellos lowers their accuracy with Mud Slap, barely doing any damage. So we go back and forth with them, sometimes missing their snarls and me water pulsing or using Recover. This gets boring. So I swap for Roselia to leech seed the skunk, but he gets scared after a nasty flamethrower. So more tag-ins occur with Shellos not afraid of flamethrower, then baits the snarl for Roselia to come back safely finishing the battle with a magical leaf. In return for saving his life, the bike shop owner gifts me a beautiful yellow bicycle. It's like a reward. And the creepiness continues. Don't say a word, just take it. 
With the odd keystone in my possession, I begin my quest to catch my very own spirit tomb. I go underground because to summon a spirit tomb, you must interact with 32 unique NPC basement dwellers. Entering and exiting areas just for a chance for NPC spawn locations to change. After three and a half hours, 27 NPCs were found, but I hadn't seen one during the last hour, so I'm just going to progress the story from here. Status update of the Hollow Tower is the tower is shaking ever so slightly. Ah, Hearthome City. Nice to get some fresh air and visit some cool places like this church. Make sure you never judge a Pokemon based on whether it's weak or strong. Listen, lady, I'm Cynthia. I only catch the best Pokemon. This lady won't let me go for a stroll because Roselia and Shellos aren't cute? You're telling me this landlubber is cute, but these two are not cute? Who cares? Then I catch Cynthia's mom helping a different girl with beauty contests. I definitely caught her in the act. I mean, she's never even told me about beauty contest. You can tell she doesn't care for me to win by giving me whatever this dress is. Oh, Barry, I am glad to see you. I could really go for a battle right now after all this crap I just went through. You haven't seen my Shellos yet, and she's pretty gnarly, crushing your Starly with one ancient power. As Grotto comes in, I bring out Roselia. For a while, there is quite a stalemate with Grotto resisting Magical Leaf and Roselia quad resisting Razor Leaf. So both sides decide to set up with us using Growth and them using Curse. Later, Roselia defeats the Grass Turtle with Magical Leafs, but he's got to dip out right after because of that fire horse. Shellos takes her time using recover whenever needed. Then when she's comfortable, she spouts some water pulses at Ponyta. Barry sends out Buizo next, who is looking a little sus with that tail whip. Helicopter, helicopter. Ancient powers get rid of that aviated weasel. Now in Veilstone City, we can finally upgrade our style to look more like Cynthia should look. I actually don't stay in the city long and head over to Pastoria City since I feel like it would be better for my two Pokemon to take on Crasher Wake first. Shello still is a widow baby though, and has to face the mustache twirler Gyarados. And I just realized I forgot to heal Shellos. She still manages to live after two crunches, but the consequences of not healing make Shellos useless. That's because she only had two PP left of ancient power. I recover a couple turns, but realize it's no use, so Shellos faints. Roselia appears like a ninja, dodging the Ice Fang, then getting the revenge kill with a Grass Knot. Quagsire is four Four times a week to Giga Drain. Need I say more? Floatzel tries to avenge Quagsire with Ice Fang, but Roselia still has 9 HP left, allowing him to drain all Floatzel's HP with only one Giga Drain, winning us the Fen Badge. It's back to Veilstone City for the fourth gym badge, and after some battles with the gym trainers, Shellos evolves into Gastrodon, which will be much needed for Maylene. Roselia still goes first, though, because Dazzling Gleam is just too much for Metatite and Machoke. The real battle is only beginning with Maylene's ace, Lucario. A high pitched screech lowers Roselia's defense, and our Dazzling Gleam doesn't even get them into the yellow. So while Lucario bulks up, I have Roselia Leech Seed before fainting from a Metal Claw. Gastrodon is screeched as well, but it doesn't matter thanks to Gastrodon knocking Lucario out of the ring with Dig, winning us the Cobble Badge. I meet up with Barry later to show what a complete joke he is. You don't evolve Starly? Fine, I'll Rock Tomb it. You won't evolve Weasel? Fine, I'll dig it a grave. Anyways, I'm having trouble getting rid of the Psyduck, so I walk over to Valor Lakefront to ask my future self for some advice. So you bend and snap. I got it. Oh! Oh! Well, the bend and snap sure did the trick. What was that technique you used? I too seek the power of the bend and snap. No way, Cyrus, you're creepy. Speaking of creepy, it's time to face gym leader Fantina and her spooky Pokemon. Things start off well with Will-O-Wisp missing while Gastrodon rock tombs. Their second Will-O-Wisp does connect, which means a second rock tomb does not finish the Drift Bloom. After being hexed, a third rock tomb pops that balloon out of here. Gengar appears next, pulling off a Confuse Ray after we recover some HP. The Confusion does cause our dig to fail, but our second an attempt works out, and this Miss Magia stays in line with their tradition of keeping us confused with their confuse rays. That was a bad play because they could have just used Magical Leaf the next turn, which is brutal for Gastrodon. But Roselia cleans things up with Shadow Ball, winning us the Relic Badge. Hi, Cynthia. Oh, hi, Cynthia. I just came to tell you the next time we meet, we're gonna fight to the death. Okay, bye. After receiving that horrid news, I fight Barry again at Candelave City. Sure, some of his Pokemon are evolved now, but they all lose the same way as last time, except for this Heracross, who is new and drowns from muddy waters. By now, I'm sick of only having two team members, so I hop into this super fast boat. I said super fast boat?
That's better. I sail on to Iron Island where I meet with Riley, who gives us our third Pokemon in the form of an egg. I also go just a bit deeper into the cave to pick up the shiny stone, which evolves Roselia into a Roserade. Now I really want this egg to hatch, so I decide to get off my fat butt and start pedaling back and forth until Riolu finally decides to hatch from its egg. I don't feel like grinding right now though, so he'll just get XP by backseat gaming. You know what that means. Gym leader time. Featuring Byron, and it seems like no matter what, that Bronzor is gonna live the first attack just to put up a trick room. With Slurmons going first, Bronzor confuses Roserade, then gets blown away by a Shadow Ball. Steelix likes to set up rather than attack also, so he summons a Sandstorm while being sucked by a Giga Drain. He tries to get rid of us with Earthquake, but Roserade lives and Giga Drains again. There is still one turn of Trick Room left, helping Bastiodon to go first with Stone Edge, but Roserade isn't bothered by it too much. Seeing that Giga Drain didn't do as much this time, a Gastrodon Switch is the obvious right decision here along with a quad super effective Earth Power winning us the Mind Gym Badge. Hey Cynthia, come with me to the library. Okay Gramps, I brought Cynthia like I said, and now I'm out of here. I don't know what's going on here. So I'm gonna fill up my roster a bit more. I head back to Wayward Cave with the power of strength. I can now access the basement to find myself a Gibble. Best part, it's Jolly Nature, just like Cynthia's in-game Garchomp. Next Pokemon on the list was a Feebas from Mount Coronet. This encounter sucks, like a lot. To find a Feebas, you have to fish in one of the four random tiles in this massive lake. So I disconnected my switch from the computer and turned on some Netflix. Over four hours later, I finally found a tile with Feebas. As happy as I was to find one, this playthrough has had a lot of time-consuming ways of getting Cynthia's Pokemon. Running around to evolve Badoo, finding NPCs for Spirit Tomb, cycling to hatch Riolu, fishing for Feebas, even more cycling for the Lucario evolution, and cooking Poffins, which somehow increases beauty for Feebas to evolve into a Milotic. So please, if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel. It really does mean a lot to me since these videos take a lot of time to make. And if that's not good enough for you, do it for this suffering Magikarp. If you don't subscribe and like the video, it will die. I know you don't want that on your conscience. Only you can save this Magikarp. All right, let's get back into some action with Saturn. Roserade Shadow Balls his Kadabra, Bronzor, and Toxicroak pretty easy. The XP share from the battle helps Gibble evolve into a Gabite. On my way back home, I pass by the nearby lake to see Lucas in trouble with Mars. Roserade scares off Golbat, so he U-turns out of there. Perugly fell from my trap, Aerial acing me, getting poisoned for making contact. Giga Drains and Shadow Balls from here send this commander blasting off again. That's it. I need something more challenging. Even though Lucario and Milotic are still underleveled, I go to Snowpoint City to face Candace. Lucario immediately shows he's not to be messed with, flexing with his flash cannon. Now watch this Sneasel stand there, all smug, thinking it's going to survive a four-time super effective Aura Sphere, all because it's holding a Choppo Berry, which is supposed to weaken my fighting attack. <laughs> Medicham can actually hurt us, so I don't know why Candace didn't send it earlier. I save Lucario for later, so Gastrodon takes the Sage. She does pull off one Earth Power, but the Brick Break upon switching and two more after that were too much for my slug. Candace heals with full restore, but that's not enough to stop Roserade's magnificent Shadow Ball. Abomasnow obviously has the advantage in this matchup, but I keep Roserade in to deal some chip damage along with dropping their special defense before dying to a Blizzard. With the path now paved, Lucario wins the game with Flash Cannon, earning us the Icicle Badge. Oh shoot! Shoot, I forgot Barry was securing the Lake Acuity location. I wonder how he's doing. Oh, you finished already? I can't believe we're not going to have a rematch against Jupiter. Really, what a bummer. All I get to do is easily defeat Cyrus's discount team and Saturn is pointless because his team is the exact same way it was before. I was disappointed that I didn't get to prove myself to Jupiter earlier, but at least we get to participate alongside Barry in a doubles match versus Jupiter and Mars, while also saving the world at the same time. These Bronzors don't pose much of a threat though, so I'm gonna have Lucario nasty plot twice to raise his special attack. He fails the third time because of hitting himself in confusion. No thanks to their confuse rays. So I start telling him to just start clapping them with aura spheres. With Skuntink on the field, I change it up with Flash Cannon, but the Stinker stays alive to poison my buddy Munchlax. Bronzor keeps us confused, which means Skuntink lives another turn and Munchlax dies. Berry Star Raptor arrives, swiftly knocking out Skuntink with close combat. Lucario is still on standby, hitting himself. Star Raptor continues to show off his fighting skills, clocking Bronzor back into its Pokeball, while Lucario one-shots Golbat with Flash Cannon. Jupiter's out of Pokemon, so it's just Mars left, and her bodacious cat is surprisingly fast, digging before any of us can strike. 
I switch in my Lodic to more comfortably tank the dig, whilst our Raptor continues close combating. My Lodic finally gets an opportunity to show what he's got, but an underleveled Ice Beam doesn't finish the goal bat. Thus, Barry's Bird steals the kill. Well, it looks like we're still doomed. Oh, never mind. Things look like they're gonna be okay. Wow. There was no other way the world had to be fixed. Well, it looks like the verdict for Cyrus is guilty, and I'm the bailiff. Honchkrow steps up to defend his evil master. Unfortunately for him, my Lucario is faster, using Flash Cannon before being hit by an air cutter. Cyrus saves his bird by switching in Gyarados. I see this as a great time to get my Lodix some extra XP before my real encounter Gashardon enters the fray. After thawing from the Ice Fangs freeze, she soaks in the waterfall with her Storm Drain ability, then starts crushing Gyarados and Weavile with Rock Tombs. Running low on HP from Honchkrow's critical hit Night Slash, I decide to give Goodbye a chance to finally battle, but turns out he's not ready yet. So back to the bread and butter with Roserade, but dazzling Honchkrow with Gleam. However, Roserade does lose the matchup against Crobat, but all that's needed from Gastrodon is another rock tomb to stop Cyrus, saving the world from mass destruction. As the dust clears, it seems there is one challenger remaining. He's just standing there. Some may run from this threat, some may capture it for their own gain, but I, Cynthia, strive to be the greatest trainer in the world. Thus, my Gastrodon and Lucario enter the ring and take the title of Legendary for ourselves. What's the prize for winning? How about I finally find 32 NPCs in the underground, which means Spirit Tomb is finally mine. He's quite behind level-wise compared to the rest of the team, but I know how to fix that. He can solo Volkner. Just kidding, buddy. It was just to get you some more XP. Goodbye is still under level 2, but he ain't scared of no Raichu. However, that Octillery does scare him. Not Roserade, though. Ampapom throws off our pace with a critical hit fake out, then gets poisoned for double hitting us. <laughs> Lucario handles the situation with Aura Spheres, and what is it with these Choppleberries? They're not gonna save ya! Luxray is a meteor animal surviving a nasty plot boosted Aura Sphere, and almost kills my Lucario with Thunderfang. Predicting another Thunderfang, I have Gastrodon negate it with her ground typing, then demolish the Luxray with Earth Power, winning us the Beacon Badge. Having access to Victory Road Helm Cynthia's ace, Gabite, reach its final form of a Garchomp. Finally, I can now challenge the Elite Four. Ah, oh, Barry, you really had to ruin the moment, didn't you? Well, since most of my Pokemon are at a decent level now, it's time to show off some of their skills. First, my Lodic's competitive ability. Staraptor's Intimidate lowers our attack stat, but thanks to the competitive ability, any time a stat is dropped, my Lodic's special attack increases by two stages. It would have been a quick lights out for that bird if they weren't holding a Focus Sash. But they waste their time with Sunny Day anyways, giving my Lodic the open shot. Barry, do you really think Torterra is the right pick here? I understand it's a grass type, but you just saw me ice beaming. So I don't feel bad at all for doing this to you. And Rapidash is next. Who taught you how to play this game? Barry finally sends out Snorlax, a decent pick. It's annoying enough to chip some damage and put my Lodic to sleep. So I have Gastrodon take its place, who is annoyed by the chip damage and being yawned to sleep. In the end, Gastrodon wins the interaction. Buizel arrives, prompting my Roserade to step in and Oko them with Giga Drain. Heracross is the last Pokemon I'll ever see from Barry. And it's no problemo with our Dazzling Gleams. Get out of here, Barry. Only winners belong here. I know I said I was eager to face the Elite Four but I did at the beginning of the video say that I was not allowed to beat the game until I had the same movesets as Cynthia's in-game team. After searching in the underground, I found all the TMs needed. However, my Lodix Mirror Coat is an egg move. I typically don't use egg moves in these challenge videos, so I just head over to the move deleter to remove the fourth slot, leaving my Lodic with only three moves. That's fair enough. I have one personal issue though. You see, Garchomp is the Pokemon people think of when Cynthia comes to their minds. Heck, he's even on the thumbnail. I haven't even used it once this run, so I think it's time for this beast to show the Elite Four what he's made of. Elite member number one, Aaron. Garchomp uses Swords Dance to double his attack power while shrugging off a Bug Buzz. One Dragon Claw slays the Dust Ox. Garchomp continues with the Dragon Claw, showing no mercy to any of Aaron's bugs. The only exception is an Earthquake, obliterating the Drapion. Elite member number two, Bertha. Thanks for the power display, Garchomp. It's time for the OG Roserade to show off her new energy ball move. He bowls over the Quagsire, Whiskash, and Pseudo Wudo. Golem stays alive because of its sturdy ability, allowing them to Earthquake once before going down. Hippowdon does not have the same security as Golem, therefore suffering the same fate as her first three comrades. Elite member number three, Flint. You may be wondering why I'm ice beaming with my Lodic rather than surfing. I promise you it will make sense later. It was annoying trying to have my Lodic lose on purpose because he froze rapidly twice, but the Toxic from the Rapidash's Poison Jab ensured they get the mini victory. With Garchomp now here, Rapidash stays frozen with fear. He pulls off two Swords Dances before saying sayonara to Rapidash, Lopunny, Steelix, and Drifblim. Infirmape normally wouldn't be a problem, but I need Roserade to die here. I need a Gashiron to pass out too, but the little bugger only has attacking moves. 
lives, slowly whittling down the monkey's HP. Unfortunately, Gastrodon, through the power of friendship, lives the mock punch at 1 HP. Gastrodon throws a rock to him. No, 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 no! Elite member number four, Lucian. Mr. Mime, please knock out Gastrodon. Thank you! Lucario could probably sweep this team after some nasty plots, but that's not the plan. I have Lucario spam flash cannons while Lucian sets up screens, heals, and gets Lucario down to a sliver of health with psychics. One more flash cannon for Medicam, then high jump kick knocks down the fan favorite Pokemon. Spiritomb tries to be useful, but even though he's properly leveled now, the output is underwhelming. Who doesn't love to see Garchomp cause some destruction though? Alkazam gets greedy with nasty plot for getting how frail his body is. Giraffe Rig is a giraffe. I've never met anyone who is scared of a giraffe. Garchomp seizes on this opportunity to Swords Dance, one after another, even when the move fails, just to stall out Trick Room. Once it expires, Garchomp stops playing with his food and gets serious. Surprisingly though, Bronzong tolerates the Dragon Claw just enough. They try to get payback, but a second Dragon Claw defeats Lucian. Time to explain why I purposely let my Pokemon faint. Here's my lineup. And here's Cynthia's team. I wanted it to be the perfect finale with both of our Pokemon the same level. Gastrodon is one level higher, but Spiritomb is one level lower, so I think that's good enough. There's no one better than Cynthia, so who better to take the crown than from myself? We both start with Spiritomb for a fair start. Mine is faster, but theirs is stronger. So even though we shot two Shadow Balls first, their two Shadow Balls actually got the kill. Roserade comes in with a revenge in his eyes, Dazzle Gleaming Spiritomb to the afterlife. Future Cynthia sends Milotic next. I get what she's trying to do with Ice Beam, but come on, girl, you know you had better picks in the back. She continues to throw the game by calling out Gastrodon next. That time travel machine must have messed with her brain or something. This makes more sense. Another ditto fight. And although she proves to be the better bouquet with her fast speed, my Lucario is confident enough to withstand a Shadow Ball to buff himself with a nasty plot. Next, he lives Dazzling Gleam, then bops Roserade out of here with a Flash Cannon. Another ditto, and once again, due to the lack of speed, my side loses. I want the Garchomp mirror match to happen, so I throw him out next to make short work of Lucario with an Earthquake. Ground Shark vs Ground Shark Unlike my team, Cynthia's Pokemon are properly Eevee trained, so they get to box first with Dragon Claw. At least my Garchomp was able to pull off one move unlike the previous mirror battles. As long as no crits happen, this is looking like a GG. My Lotus survives the massive earthquake then sends off Cynthia back to her timeline right where she belongs. Definitely was a fun battle but it goes to show that if you're older and think you're better than the upcoming generation you better think again. Young Cynthia enters the Hall of Fame with her amazing cast of Pokemon concluding this challenge as Queen of Sinnoh. I put a lot of effort into these videos to give you the best experience possible so if you liked it why not give it a like and subscribe. Not a lot of my viewers are subscribed so I really do appreciate it. I've had a lot of fun with the BDSP games so more videos are coming for sure. If you ever want to see any of my future runs live, go check out my YouTube live stream channel. Link in the description below. You all have a good one. Thanks.